Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate live stream where we share local numbers and look at what's going on in our market. So we're going to go over a little bit of local news this morning about the Arizona economy that I found and dug up and then we're going to dive deep into the numbers. Um, do me a favor and subscribe and hit that like button and if you do you could win ice cream. I don't know how I'll get the ice cream to you, uh, but you could, uh, let's do this. If you like ice cream, then push the like button. Well, that's a nice, it's a nice workaround. Um, drifted off there, didn't I? Okay. So this morning we have 7,802 homes on the market. We came within 50 homes on Saturday and Sunday of hitting 8,000, but it did not happen. For the seven days, the past seven days, though, we had more homes come up, 4,180 homes came on the market with 3727 going under contract. That's a difference of 453, so that's a little wider gap. Kind of looks like buyers backed off a little bit. And uh, with 1,773 price reductions, so it kind of looks like this. You can see that the listings went up and buyer activity kind of stayed right about the same. Slowly started to climb as we got through the week, but no standouts there, nothing earth shattering going on. So that's where we're gonna look at uh, some different price points and stuff and see what where the new listings are coming up. Uh, we're gonna, but first I wanna share a couple things here with you. One is that innovation analysts put Phoenix among the world's best cities for business future. And this is a global ranking. We came in like number 51 in the country. And they're saying that uh, research and development was a key factor. And it said other innovation areas considered in a report were industrial ecosystems, startups, and tech ecosystems. So Phoenix is on the map as far as being a place to start business. And then take a look at what happened down here, down in Chandler. Intel breaks ground on a new Valley fabs as White House seeks supply chain transparency. There's a shortage of chips, but they've always had plans to grow down there and put in five plants and they broke ground with the, I got a neighbor there and their horn is going off. They broke, they broke ground down there uh, in one of their new fabs and it's going to add 3,000 jobs in an area where housing is already tight. Boy, could that get any more irritating? And I have no way of turning that off. Arizona grocery chain bashes to be acquired. This one surprised me. This is a local grocery chain uh, started by Eddie Basha and his brother Ike, and they have sold to, oh good, it stopped. They have sold to Rayleigh's, another independent grocery store out of Southern California, and Rayleigh's intends on keeping it the same. Um, like, Trey says, it's a bittersweet transaction. I used to work in the grocery industry and they were terrific people, especially Trey. He was very involved in the Chandler education system and they own, Bash's owns, Bash's, Food City, and AJ's. And Rayleigh's intends on keeping that together and probably expanding AJ's into Southern California. So let's get to some of the numbers here, shall we? Um, according to the Cromford Index here, once again, we're seeing Fountain Hills just being in favor of sellers like crazy with an index of 653. Remember that 100 is a balanced market. So something's going on in Fountain Hills. And it's simply the fact that buyers are active out there, but there's just nothing available. So that tilts in favor of sellers. So we're saying we have nine cities where the market moved in favor of sellers over the last month and eight where the market moved in favor of buyers but the average change was less than 1%. So it says here, new listings have been arriving at a slower pace, although the iBuyers have amassed a large amount of inventory, which could come to the market over a short period of time. Interesting, demand is looking strong and continues to head higher. However, a large part of that demand is coming from investors and iBuyers rather than traditional home buyers. So I looked up, uh, this morning, how many homes are on the market now that are owned by these big three I buyers? And there's little, little above 800. So it's not a significant number. But when you're looking at um, 7,802 homes on the market, the I buyers have acquired and then placed 800 of them on the market. Now they've been buying about a thousand a month. We haven't seen the September numbers yet. That's probably going to be about 1,400. 
and then you can expect them to go back on the market about 45 days later after they go in and paint them and fix them up. So um, it's not really a game changing number. It's they're still rolling around five or six percent of our total market, uh, but they are having a little bit of an impact. And we go and look at active listings here uh, by price point. Take a look at the 600 to 800,000 range. They are at 2018 levels right here, 2019, 18. That price range has got inventory back up to what I would say is a comfortable level. Yet, yet we're still seeing bidding wars and in that price range. And it's, it's, a, it's a surprise. You really don't know where to craft your offer. Um, so there are some in that price point where you can go lower than what they're asking. Um, comps are all over the place. Um, I wrote a couple offers over the weekend. One of them I wrote and the agent said, well, uh, the buyer seller's a little slow to respond because they're in Canada. And I thought, well, when did Canada not have cell phones and internet? And so, and he was right. They're very slow to respond. <laughs> it's like, I don't get it. Yeah, they're in Canada. Okay. Um, so what's going on in the four hundred dollars to $500,000 range? We're still below 2020 levels. That remains to be a problem. Whoops, that picked all of them. Let me pull that up. That's not what's going on in the four to 500,000 range. They are up, they're almost up to 2019 levels, but that's still very aggressive. So you're looking at 1,500 homes. The problem with the three to $400,000 price range is it's just drying up. Uh, there's, you know, those homes are being priced up in the four and 500,000 range. But this area here between four and five, you're seeing 1,530 on here for the week. And then you see the I buyers. that's the price range where they're gobbling them up. Um, there's a lot of competition there. However, having said that, those transactions are kind of hidden from us. So we have 1,500 homes out there in that price range right now, but there's a shadow purchasing that's going on there for homes that don't even make the market. So there's a thousand homes over the month that never got listed and they got purchased uh, because people like the convenience. So they sold their home. Now those homes will eventually roll into that number. And that's what you're seeing. You're seeing the I buyers have purchased homes, they're putting them back on. And now we have an increase in inventory in that 400 to $500,000 range. The majority of them being um, uh, the 800 being, you know, open door offer pad and Zillow. So uh, it's safe to say that, uh, that they are showing back up and maybe about 25% of them are being sold to investors to use as renters. So that's what's going on in that price point. Um, if you're moving, there's seven pet peeves that really bother movers. And I've seen these articles before. And so there's things you can do to make things easier for the movers. And one of the biggest pet peeves is last minute scheduling. You know, you're not giving them a lot of notice. The other one is bad boxes. And that is, you know, you're, you're bringing home the boxes from Costco. Um, it's really hard for them. They would love to have everything just on a hand truck. And so they can move it out slowly. I mean, easily. And some people just take things and put them in plastic bags or they put them in, um, you know, um, really terrible boxes and they don't even use plastic tubs. Non-labeled boxes, that's tough for them. Although movers, look, if you don't label your box, they're just gonna call everything living room, just gonna dump it there. Items left unpacked. I helped a young lady move about it about two years ago. And I remember telling her uncle, I said, we all knew today was moving day. How come nobody told her? Everything wasn't packed up. She was throwing it in bags and boxes at the last minute and it was hectic ill-prepared houses if you're getting ready to move into a house and you're cleaning while the movers are coming in that's a problem prepared apartments and extra visitors and what they mean about that is prepared apartments sometimes you know you're pulling up and you've got an elevator and you don't know where the truck is supposed to park and nobody figures it out till the last minute so if you're moving into an apartment complex with an elevator do some planning ahead of time so you can let the movers know, here's where we're going to park and here's how the elevator works. Because some elevators, if you hold them open too long, they shut down. So um, you want to make sure that things go easy for movers and you're probably paying by the hour anyway. So you might as well make that a smooth transit uh, transition. One mover that I saw really had a gr great solution to, and it was two men in a truck, to items just being left willy-nilly. They took one of these 
great big, you'll see them like produce boxes, cardboard, and they, they put them on dollies. And they just go into the place and they just start throwing all the loose stuff into this big box, roll it down, and then empty it out in the truck. And they made quick work of the move that I watched. So make things easier for their movers and don't forget to tip them. Everybody have an amazing week. I'll see you again tomorrow. Okay.